probably one of the strangest creatures that those involved in the abduction phenomenon have come across and reported to UFO researchers has to be the praying mantis insectoid alien. And while there are other types of alien beings or interdimensional beings that are reported more often than the mantis type creature, such as the tall and short gray reptilian type entities, alien human hybrids, hairy or fur covered creatures, and as well as an alien that looks extremely human and that is usually blonde hair and blue eyed, it is usually the praying mantis or the insectoid type alien that has a stranglehold on the imagination and the subconscious of those who were abducted. Oftentimes in the abduction phenomenon, it is a gray alien, especially the short gray alien that is more of a worker or some kind of a creature that is just doing menial jobs and menial tasks. And while those involved in the abduction phenomenon make the claim that it's the gray aliens that are usually the ones who are ordering abductees around and telling them what to do during this abduction process, it isn't really just the gray aliens that are working on their own. There can be reptilians or perhaps human looking aliens, but many times abductees report the fact that the figurehead or the manager or the one that's in charge delegating all of the orders to all of the tall and short grays is more often than not a mantis or insectoid type alien. And while gray aliens, tall and short, and reptilians are often the talk of extraterrestrial researchers, not much is ever said or really known about the praying mantis insectoid aliens. Aside from the strange and grotesque look of an eight to nine foot tall praying mantis alien creature that you can find as you wake up in the middle of the night in your bedroom as an abductee or that you can run into during the abduction process while you're aboard some kind of an interdimensional or otherworldly spacecraft these praying mantis aliens seem to be involved with all of the same things that come with the abduction phenomenon in fact there are various statements made by those who have come into contact with these praying mantis or insectoid looking creatures but it seems that for the most part these praying mantis and insectoid type creatures are involved with the same types of activities that other types of ETs tend to be dealing with. This would include abductions of people and tampering with human DNA going back hundreds if not thousands of years. The praying mantis and insectoid creature is also involved in the creation of clones when they abduct people and take their DNA. They often create a clone of the person they've been abducting and they seem to track this person over very long periods of time throughout the lifetime of the individual. And also, people who make the claim that they're abducted by this insectoid creature state that the abduction phenomenon is generational within their family. In other words, if a particular person is abducted, it's more than likely that their parents were abductees and that the children will also be taken by these creatures at some point in time. It is also stated by many in the UFO community, especially researchers, that these praying mantis aliens, much like other types of alien creatures, tend to abduct blonde hair, blue eyed, or the kind of people who would tend to have a European heritage. It is a theory of UFO researchers and abductees that these praying mantis aliens and other types of alien creatures or interdimensional beings are involved with some kind of a plan to collect as much DNA as possible. The eventual goal of all of these abductions by praying mantis type creatures or other extraterrestrials or interdimensional beings is to create some kind of a alien human hybrid race that could potentially survive some kind of a catastrophic event here on our planet. It is unknown whether or not these types of extraterrestrials are here to help or if they're involved with some kind of a plot to purposefully and knowingly depopulate the planet of human beings. It's really unknown whether or not these creatures have some kind of an ulterior motive. There are some researchers in the UFO community who claim that all of these abductions that are taking place, whether it's involving the mantis or insectoid type creatures or other gray alien or reptilian type entities, in the long run will not benefit anybody here on planet Earth as an individual or a group, and it will not benefit the overall trajectory of mankind's potential. The fact that these creatures, whether they be mantis or insectoid type aliens or interdimensional beings or other types of entities, can come at will and take people whenever they want and subject them to all types of medical experiments, 
against the person's wanting shows just how much trouble humanity is in with these creatures. everyone, I'm Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com and today's topic is a little different. It's called Praying Mantis versus Alien Mantis. So the question, hi Lynn, I've been seeing a lot of praying mantises in my garden recently. It got me thinking, what is the difference between alien mantis beings and these little insects on earth? They are fascinating creatures and I've heard that mantis beings are peaceful. Is that true? What is the relationship between the two? Thank you. So I love this little different of a topic here and when I focus on the praying mantis, I do see a connection to the alien mantis. I get that the praying mantis is less evolved than the alien. It looks as though the praying mantis is a lower density, 3D incarnated form of the alien mantis. That was really odd how it came through to me. And with regards to being peaceful, the praying mantis is much more peaceful than the alien variety, but still has some aggression here. They're fairly harmless to humans, but are quite aggressive to their insect counterparts. They even can be helpful to humans, killing many insects that can cause harm or destruction. I don't see them attacking or trying to bite a human. It's almost like they know who could be the bigger aggressor. Like if I go after this human, what are they going to do to me? They have that, that foresight. They do have keen instincts and their internal intuition and behavior gives them the feeling of being or needing to be a friend over a foe because they know that they can be taken out. So it's like they know who's in ultimate power here. So they succumb and basically don't, don't try to cause harm to humans here on earth. So then when I started to look at a little more in this evolution chain, the praying mantis looks to evolve over several incarnations into the alien mantis. I cannot connect to the peacefulness of them, however. I see them as dominant, and this is referring to the alien ones, and controlling. When I've done readings on the inner earth, I've seen various insectoid, meaning um, standing upright, kind of humanoid sort of shape, aliens, and they all look to dominate over humans. I have the impression, as a praying mantis, they feel weak. But once they're large and powerful enough to feel strong, they exude their strength and they want to have that power. They want to have that control. And as an alien mantis, they have the ability to do so. So that is coming out on them or in them. So very interesting reading. Uh, thanks so much for the suggestion. I really appreciate it. If you have something you want me to look at, please just shoot me a line. I'm happy to put it on my list and, and have a look at it for a future Post. So again, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, please like my video, subscribe to my channel, all these great things. It's really helpful to me and to help build my channel. Again, I'm Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com. Thank you. Bye. So um, I was watching uh, a sh uh, somebody's YouTube the other day, and she's talking about how this is Florbrun. I don't watch her a lot, you know, and I take it all with a grain of salt, of course, but she hits on some really intriguing notes sometimes. She was real upset and talking about how she's registered that, you know, what's happening with the jaw, the jab, it's, it's an insectoid invasion inside the body. She was specifically talking about the arachnid, right? Um, and the invasion, the infestation it's taking within the blood and within the body itself, right? Now, a couple months ago, I talked about the, the black spiders that a lot of us have experienced, and we're seeing more and more right now because the fields are becoming more prevalent with them, and there's more access to sight right now, too. So, you know, they've been on my periphery. They've really been annoying me because I, I have a big beef with their agenda and their, their M.O., Okay, so think like shadow China right now, like all of these really, you know, sketchy, experimental, shady, um, toxic invasion type things that we're getting from that side of the world. That's insectoid territory, right? So that's the type of frequency signature we're looking at. Okay, so the insectoids love to experiment. They love to study. They have their own agenda. They have no empathy for your pain threshold. Um, and they really want to understand how things tick, right? So they're the type that um, it's not necessarily 
maliciously intended as you know saturnian or satanic experiments might be it, you know if they're doing an ex from my experience if they're doing an experiment on something or someone um that is intentionally inducing pain it's not because they want the person to suffer it's more about you know what's happening chemically or mechanically or neurologically with this right the suffering is just a happenstance that they really don't care about so that's kind of a different intent in regard to how the satanic realm might make somebody suffer through an experiment suffering is to suffer for the satanic for you know the um insectoid it's more of like a byproduct okay so um so Fleurgren was talking about how the insectoids are taking over the blood. So what's happening, and we've seen with the microscopy, if you've been watching any of this, what's happening with people with the jab at this point is um, entities are forming inside their blood. There's actually little critters <laughs> coming together inside and coagulating and, and having an internal invasion in a way that's unprecedented, right? Now, um, Insectoids have long been doing lots of experiments. I've had a lot of interaction with the mantids over the, you know, the years, uh, a lot of different ant type beings, and by no means are they all negative, but everyone is trying to meet needs and, and figure something out, right? Try to get their agenda fulfilled. And a big one in the insectoids is how to reinstate their claim and how to make sure they have access to you know, spirit or the quantum energies that they've kind of cut themselves off for from, how do they proliferate their lifespan in a way that's sustainable? Humans have the ability to do this. So they study us like crazy, right? They also know how to manipulate the different um, frequency realms and ways of interacting, communicating that we just don't because we're like infants when it comes to our abilities to access the psychic realms and know what's what. Um, so they play with this too. So I just did a session with a client who was doing the session on behalf of her daughter. When her daughter, who is now uh, seven and a half, um, was four months old, her daughter got meningitis, okay? And I remember them talking about this to me because we work together often. And it made me think about how I didn't know this from my mom, but I went back and did a session a few months ago and I found that as an infant, I had encephalitis for a, a period of time, which I found really intriguing because I connect um, psychic attack and experiences in the interim between spirit and physical realm happening when these infants are getting these types of brain swelling and serious complications and dis-ease, when infants are getting certain serious illnesses, I often correlate that to what's happening with them, their battle, you know, or their struggles when it comes to them moving back through spirit realm into the physicality because they're still really utilizing a thin veil. So anyhow, so it comes back around months later and they say, hey, I want to look at her meningitis. What happened and what do we need to clear? Well, you know, do the session and basically I get to a point, now this is going to sound pretty radical unless you guys are <laughs> used to accessing your aspects and your other um, timelines and all this stuff. And if you do access this, you might really relate. Um, so basically I start to register, uh, you know, and I have to study, I'm not clear. What is meningitis? Okay. So it's an inflammation of the meninges, which is a more shallow layer that covers, um, your brain for protection, right? So it's an inflammation of that, um, layer of the brain, uh, collagen and the spinal cord, right? It accesses the cerebral spinal fluid, um, which I've talked about a lot in courses. Your CSF is, in my opinion, your direct link to spirit. The fluid that restores and rejuvenates runs all the way up to the top of your brain, down to your perineum, and it cleanses and keeps you connected to spirit and cycling your energy, right? And it, it's charged. It runs your electromagnetic fluid, or excuse me, an electromagnetic frequency. <clears throat> so um, 
you know, meningitis is an inflammation and an attack. Hers was bacterial. Hers was uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Um, so it speaks to the frequency signature of the attack, right? So that's like um, a, a staph infection, basically. So we've got these, these bacteria, these invasions inside the body um, affecting the part of a four month year old formation of basically how they regulate spirit and matter. Okay. Um, and then what lit up in her was parts of her brain were, were muscle testing parts of her brain that, um, are basically forming, uh, her pituitary, her connection to spirit. And so I start researching the different layers of the brain and we find arachnoid matter that I've never heard of, right? Which is very interesting to me. Um, and then as I'm starting to wrap up session, the little girl's spirit comes in and tells me, she says, you know, she taps me basically, she taps me and points over there. And I look over there and I see a scene where it's basically a giant roach-like insectoid behind a human, which she's telling me is her. And there's, there's like tubing coming out of the head. <clears throat> so there's still studies and experiments going on. And I'm like, okay, what realm is this in? Is this another timeline? No. Okay, so this is another realm. This is another dimensionality. I need to find the frequency of that realm. So I'm trying to figure out what frequency plane we're on here, right? And then she helps me suss that out. Um, and so basically I'm finding the frequency on that plane of the CSF. So the way in which we are connected to spirit, um, you know, they're accessing that level of where they're, you know, capturing this part of her consciousness and doing these testings. And I say, okay, how come they're here? What's going on? And basically, here's the, in, the I say this is the interesting part. You guys want to thought the giant insectoid is the interesting part. But she tells me basically, um, which I totally relate to. I've got aspects like this. Um, that one of her aspects, oh, what she says, let me read it to you verbatim, actually. Um, she said to me, the subdural plane represents the outskirts of space where a lot of bartering happens. I got involved with the wrong group and couldn't fulfill an order. I got cocky. Okay. So I had to look that up. What's subdural, right? So subdural is um, just below the, um, it, it's like just below the meningi dura matter, right? So she's saying micro to macro, this part of our brain space is affiliated with, you know, this part of outer space, right? And if any of you guys have watched the movie Serenity or the series Firefly, it's just like that. Some of our aspects that are space travelers, you know, to make sure we have our own provisions, we start working the trades. We say, hey, I'll get this item for you. Who am I going to sell it to this grouping, whatever. Delivery, payment, bam. That's how we navigate those realms for those aspects that live in, in that experience, you know. It's a can be a good, honest job, but you got to watch out. You can get looped into the wrong crew, right? <laughs> so anyway, she tells me that that aspect of hers makes an agreement, gets cocky, can't fulfill the order and the insectoids and their payback. They're like, okay, we're going to come in now. We're going to start experimenting with you because you didn't fulfill this agreement. Okay. So anyway, um, and it's interesting because they're studying that level of brain because they want access to spirit quantum frequency. So they can hopefully find a way in which they can connect up with, because they're on limited supply, right? Humans, if we're still connected to our spirit, we have this forever unlimited supply of our spirit, of our quantum, right? And interestingly enough, what was said or, you know, when I'm trying to, when I'm breaking these agreements and making sure that we're done here, you're no longer allowed to access um, this aspect, you know, you've way overtaken, overstepped in this agreement, is what I'm seeing is first they tried to um, synthetically create the cerebral spinal fluid, which doesn't work, and then they tried to um, harvest the cerebral spinal fluid and connect it up to their beings and entities, which isn't working, so they're trying all these different ways, right? How do they access spirit? so they can rejuvenate their energetics. So anyhow, end these agreements, get them out of the way. Um, but, you know, the moral of the story here is 
watch out who you're bartering with <laughs> in space. But also keep your wits about you now. There's a huge insectoid invasion and they really don't even have to hide anymore because they can stake their claim because so many of these other human factions that we see that are asinine and making rules and controlling, they are basically saying, here you go, here's your free for all, you now have permission. And the insectoids, just like the Borg, utilize the AI and work hand in hand, whether they're authoritative or they're having a minion role because they have different agendas, but common ways in which to access the information. Okay, so again, I am not saying that all insectoids are negative by any means, but this is the frequency signature we're looking at. So, you know, scan yourself, scan your life, think about, is this type of stuff affecting you? And when you work to um, combat these issues or find some new agreement, a way of coming to a common ground, see if you can think like them process like them when it comes to the solution that you're looking for, because they don't have a human approach, right? So our way of understanding them is to effort, if we can, to see how they would approach it and why what's happening.